Hello everyone, my name is Fox. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Mio Mini. This is a device that deserves all the praise that it can get. For what it's worth, the only thing that I could find here that I don't like about, there's two things that I don't like about the device. Otherwise, inside of its price bracket at around $50, I paid $54 for this shipped, uh, it, it's in a league of its own. This device is sensational. Shout out to Russ from Retro Gamer Corps for putting out the link on Twitter saying that the official AliExpress store for the Mio Mini was available. I went and rushed and I bought it. Uh, I guess there's three things I don't like. I just rushed and I bought this color version and I truly, truly hate it. <laughs> it's terrible. Like, this is such a bad color. It's not even nostalgic beige. It's just not good beige. It's a weird beige brown that is off. Uh, there is no device that I can recall having this particular beige. Uh, I don't like it at all. They do have other colors, so I would say... If you don't care, well, then no big deal. Sure. But if you do care, definitely opt to get the other types <laughs> of colors that they have because they do have better ones than this. Uh, that's pretty much it. So, again, thanks. Go out to Russ there. Uh, let's start talking about what this device has. I'm going to go ahead and power it on. I've already installed Onion version 4 on this, and that is a hard recommendation. Like, you must install Onion version 4 on this at least because that is going to get you this. Um, there, are, there is another OS that does this, but how this is all fit and finish wise onion os is my favorite if we were to talk about the inputs here overall the types of games that you're going to be playing up to playstation right playstation is going to be the high spec emulation target for this device that it plays very well under that or around that you're going to get ports so quake might be playable in there but i don't like playing quake with a d-pad but there are a sensational amount of playstation games that work just fine with a d-pad and don't need an analog stick let's talk about like the you know, the elephant in the room, how small this device is. This is the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus, which is uh, probably a fan favorite in terms of, uh, in you know, affordability. There is a very good value from the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. This can play a lot of stuff at $100. I would still, if you don't own a Retroid Pocket 2 Plus, I would totally recommend a Re Retroid Pocket 3 uh, over here. Uh, as the Retroid Pocket 3 is just superior to the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. Not in terms of performance, they're the same exact chip. Just in layout, quality of materials, everything. It's just a, it's night and day difference. But anyway, if we just take a look at the size here, this is what people are really going to love. And if, one of the things that I truly hate is on these like candy bar devices where they have exposed analog sticks. These are the things that really start pulling on the inside lining of your pockets. So you'll start pulling out the pocket in your pocket lining. And at that point, I don't consider a device pocketable because uh, it's annoying to put in my pocket. Uh, what a device that is probably contesting it in terms of uh, similarness, in terms of its verticality, is uh, the uh, Ambernix RG353V. But you can still see that this device still stands on its own in terms of size. And again, the Retroid, uh, the Ambernix RG353V has exposed analog sticks. Not as bad. It's kind of in line with the D-pad, but you're still going to get an area where when it's sitting in your pocket, you know, this these analog sticks... Uh, have travel and it's just slightly annoying and then just kind of as a funny joke we'll kind of compare the steam deck which is objectively the largest handheld that is in existence right now and you can see how small it is compared to that and it's kind of just floating on the glass for cool reasons so that's the size comparison now the thing that i want to really talk about here is again we're only going to be going up to playstation emulation but the biggest thing here that i love is game switcher so before we get into that i'm gonna go ahead and back out the second tab that i have when i get out of game switcher is to go to the games tab so i'm gonna back out of this again we're going to go into the systems tweaks setting and here is where you're going to go ahead and set that up so you go to system and then startup and you can see right here i have auto resume last game start application game switcher this is a game changer it is fantastic and then you see my main ui is the game tab. so when i backed out of game switcher i went to games i'm going to go ahead and fully power off the device when i power off the device i get this nice notification there was a vibration that you might not have heard indicating that you know i got feedback when i held down the power button i got a little uh vibration feedback the system's telling me it understood my input and shut down at this point the machine is fully shut down you could call this you know hibernation mo mode but it's basically shut down i'm gonna go ahead and power it on so that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're at like eight to nine seconds before it gets into a space where it will just start loading, right? So I am now in a spot where 
I can instantly start back any game when the machine was fully powered down. Now, obviously, you can just do standby as well. So you just press the button once. You can still see that the LED indicator is on, indicating that they're the game, the system is in standby. Effectively, at this point, everything should be just running in RAM. We are going to have less battery life in this instance, right? Because when I start back up, it's going to instantly start back up, which is great and awesome and something that you're going to want. Now, I don't know about you, but I am not someone that's going to want to, like, continually want to... So it says saving progress right there. So I'm not someone that is going to continually want to like have it in standby while it's just slowly, uh, vampirically sepping from my battery. Instead, what I prefer is to fully power it down so that I can save all that battery life. Yeah, if it takes eight seconds to boot back in, that's not a big deal because with Game Switcher, which is basically akin to a quick resume on Xbox Series S or Xbox Series X, except you have the benefit that... Yeah, you are using save states, so you do need enough capacity on your micro SD left over to have the save state to write the save state. But quick resume on Xbox Series S and X has to dump everything from RAM into disk. So you only have a smaller buffer of how many quick resume games you can have. Whereas on this, you're basically limited by how many game saves it takes up. And because game saves are so small, you can have a tremendous amount of game switcher games like preloaded, ready to go. So, like for instance, um, Gates of Zendokan. Just instantly jump into that. Or let's go to Pac Man for the Neo Geo Pocket Plus, which is actually a great port of. I died there when I saved it. Which is actually a great port because you have a bigger area. Instead of having the full screen, like if you were just do arcade emulation and seeing Pac-Man all super small in the Neo Geo Pocket version, it actually is ballooned up and it's zooming around the camera as you move around. So it's actually a really good version of Pac-Man to play if you wanted to play Pac-Man, uh, the Neo Geo Pocket version. So we'll go ahead and get out of that. So here's Persona 2, which is running on the PlayStation emulator. This is all done by RetroArch, so a lot of this needs safe state support by RetroArch to be able to function. So right now, Pico 8 doesn't support this, but I think news just happened just recently that there is going to be a Pico 8 core that does support save states. So effectively, there will be a newer version of Onion OS that will support Game Switcher in Pico 8 games, which is, you know, really cool. At that point, you're, you're, you're sitting pretty. Here we're loading up a GBA game. You can see how long it took to load into that. It also needs to be said, like, hopefully this sound is transferring over. The volume is such that it, it can be quite loud and there isn't a lot of distortion. It's pretty clear. They're doing a really good job. You almost get a sense that the uh, AV components of the Miu Mini were decided first. So, like, they basically picked the screen because the screen is really nice to look at. Like, here's Virtual Racing. Like, So I'm going to stop there real quick. But you can see that there is some color shifting happening when we go into different viewing angles. You can see it, right? Right there. Hopefully it's getting picked up on the camera. When you're looking dead on, though, it is sensational looking. So from... You know, when you take a look at it, it's like almost they were min-maxing the design of this device. They picked the screen first, the speaker is really good, and then designed everything around it as small as possible. Really quickly, let's get back into the rest of the system settings for Onion OS. So we're in tweaks here. Now you have button shortcuts where you're going to be able to switch those. Now the other thing is that you're going to be able to um, make different changes and kind of tweak this how you want. And there isn't a bunch here to go through. But the one thing that I do like is that they also include a method for taking a look at the manual of the device. So if we look at the quick start guide, this is really nice where you can get like a really quick 
uh, interface on how you would do fast forward, rewind, save states, toggle FPS, all within the particular confines of the device itself. So a nice little quick manual that's already included on the OS. That's a really nice thing. A package manager. I already installed all the cores available. If you didn't want that or whatever, you can kind of minimize that. They have theme support, so you can be able to sw uh, select whatever themes that you want. I went with this particular theme. There's also an activity track tracker, so like, so just the games that I loaded up real quick, you can see it's keeping time of how much you've been playing before. So that is kind of external to all of that, which is really cool, but it kind of leads into one of the things that I don't like about the device. Well, not it's not a fault of the device itself. It's just a lack of... Of functionality. The last bit that I want to show here is the search function. Now the search function is pretty cool. So I read Pitfall in there, but just searching by itself, just navigating through this search menu is very quick and fast, very nice, and it'll search through all the games. Now I thought I only had, uh, you know, Atari on here, but apparently I had a bunch of other ones. So if you were looking through, you know, Pitfall, and you're like, oh, I had the GBA version on here. That's that's interesting. I wonder what that's like. You can just use the search function to kind of, I guess, multi-sample a bunch of other different games when you know that it's been ported to a bunch of different consoles as well. So it's really cool. Uh, and again, I'm going to press this little button. When you press this function key, which I have set up to Game Switcher, there is, again, another little vibration feedback that indicates that you have pressed the button, and then it'll take a screenshot and make a save state of the game, which you can instantly get back to. So really, really cool overall function here. Let's show off some other games. <laughs> but it should become amazingly obviously like how smooth that is. And this is PlayStation emulation, which they don't attempt to do anything further than that. So overall, I'm just really impressed with everything. Everything is great about this device. So this particular part I'm going to be nitpicking a little bit about are these uh, trigger buttons. These shoulder buttons are difficult to press. You need to basically have one finger down before any of these buttons can work. So hopefully you have like your you're pressing down on the D-pad so that you can press one of these buttons. Because if my fingers are just floating above it, when I try to push any of these buttons, they don't like my the device is like pushing up my it's nothing's there so i have to hold it down before i can start pushing these buttons so you would need to be able to pivot the device somewhere on the front of the device before any of these trigger buttons can be pressed so as a user uh, user experience type of button layout they are unobtrusive but they are difficult to press down so in that regard they are they serve a good function as external buttons but for certain playstation games you're going to need you know these these to be accessible so there are going to be a few playstation games that i would wager are going to be a little bit frustrating to play however that isn't that big of a deal that's a little bit of a gripe the one thing that is a negative for me is that there is no wi-fi functionality on this so there is no way to get retro achievements now retro achievements is a thing that i kind of really want in a retro handheld device but this is a $50 device. So if you do not care about retro achievements, then 100% I can recommend this device. This is, again, in a league of its own. There is nothing that is in the $50 range that is as pocketable, small, well thought out, fully formed, uh, with custom firmware that is well thought out, especially with the game switcher. Uh, I mean, this one feature alone 
is worth it. I want every one of my retro handouts going forward to support Game Switcher by default. Just being able to instantly stop a game when I'm done and wanting to play something else and being able to pick back up into it, uh, it's just impressive. So that's my look at the Miu Mini. Uh, game Switcher with Onion OS is a game changer. It is fantastic. If you need a device that has retro achievements, this unfortunately does not. If you don't care about that, then you're in for a good time. This is a fantastic pocketable device that I can see everyone just kind of carrying away, carrying around with them. Additionally, just with you know how easy it is to get in and out of a game, this is the perfect retro handheld device in its price bracket. Just fantastic. As always, guys, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.